if you were a mad scientist and wanted to create the ultimate tennis player of all time, in theory, you want that player to be ambidextrous, meaning they have a dominant right hand and a dominant left hand. They're both righty and lefty. Basically, a tennis player with two forehands and no backhands. And a backhand is really something that is biomechanically a weakness. Um, it's just uh, a harder stroke to hit. You don't run around your forehand to hit a backhand. And even if you have a better backhand than a forehand, uh, players will still run around their backhand to hit a forehand. Um, just look at Richard Gasquet. He has a great uh, backhand, one-handed backhand, one of the best on tour, but he'll still run around it a little bit because the maneuverability of a forehand is just much better. It's, you know, especially on those high balls, right? Those high balls are very tough on the, on the backhand side. On the forehand side, it's a lot easier. Um, so in theory, if you want that player to be the best player of all time, you just want to create a player from scratch, you want two forehands, basically want two forehands. But there is a problem with that. And I think the biggest problem in regards to being ambidextrous is the decision making. That decision making, whether to hit a righty forehand or a lefty forehand, is a big problem because you have to switch hands. You have to switch hands uh, on the bottom of your grip. And there's just that that split second where you have to decide versus someone who has just a regular forehand and a backhand, they don't have to decide on that at all. They know what their dominant side is and they just go with the forehand or with the backhand. So for instance, um, so here's Daniel. This is me um, on the near end here. And when this ball comes my way, this ball comes my way, I already know I'm, I'm going to hit a forehand here, right? That's my decision-making process. It's, it's pretty easy. But if, if I'm both a righty forehand, lefty forehand person, this, this ball has to, I have to decide, okay, whether I should hit a forehand or a, a righty forehand or a lefty forehand. Then once I decide on that, then I, I, dip, I perform that forehand. Basically, if you're ambidextrous, this whole decision-making process is introduced. You have to decide whether to use your right hand or your left hand. And that is the biggest problem with ambidextrous players. That decision then to go to that forehand is the problem, right? So... You know, I don't have that problem. I I know I'm going to use my forehand. I'm going to use my right hand for both sides. But with ambidextrous, they have to decide which one. Which one are they going to use, left or right hand? And that is a problem. When it comes to tennis, even at our recreational level here, it's it's going very fast. It's going very fast. The game is very fast. And if you're talking about professional level, well, the game is insanely fast. And once you introduce a new decision-making process inside your own head, then it'll just make things much more complicated. So I've had experience as a player and coach with ambidextrous tennis players. And the common theme with them is that their their quality the quality of their shot making is just average so if you think about ambidextrous tennis players they should be very special right they have a very special skill set um and you know if you're ambidextrous you should be able to hit forehands out wide here forehands out wide here it doesn't matter where the the ball is going to you could reach for it also you have two forehands where you could perform top spins very well. You could just basically perform and hammer top spins all day on both sides. You have this serve, right? You can have a serve that goes out wide on both sides, lefty serve and righty serve. And so maybe even the disguise, right? Maybe you'll go for this, you know, lefty serve here, righty serve on the ad side, just to throw them off. 
And so the disguisability, the the reach, the court coverage, just hammering top spins all day, you would think that these ambidextrous tennis players can take advantage of all that, but it it's not going to happen because of that decision making process. That always that decision making process to switch hands and just figure out what to do on every shot. That's tough. That takes time. That takes um, you know, brain processing. And I think that's a hindrance. And so maybe there is someone out there that can take advantage of that, of all the things that an ambidextrous tennis player can do. But there is that weakness that is introduced as well. And, you know, the switching of the hands. And so will there ever be a player that can do that? Well, there's this player called Theodore Davidov uh, from Colorado. He's probably 12 or 13 years old right now. I've seen some videos where he's performing very well in these tennis tournaments, both forehands. Um, I can't tell if he has two serves though, but uh, you know, if he can do two forehands here, he should probably be able to do two serves as well. Can he make it? Can he make it to the pros? Well, I'm not so sure about that. I'm, I am definitely rooting for this person who can, who can grow up and, you know, obviously play well, play well in college. Definitely already a great player uh, for someone this young and to use both sides. But at the professional level, the, the, the game is just too fast. The game is just super fast. And if, if this person does get anywhere close to the pro level, Theodore is going to have to make a decision. He might need to have a backhand. And I don't know if he does have a backhand or has ever practiced a backhand. But, you know, if there is a chance that he can go pro, he may have to switch to just being a conventional player. And maybe, you know, still use, uh, you know, two forehands here and there. But um, that's going to be tough. I think that's going to be tough to do. So, are you the type of player that is considering being ambidextrous, going for lefty and righty forehands? Well, my recommendation is to not do it. That decision-making process that's introduced, the switching of the hands is going to be very tough on your game. It's going to hinder your game and slow your game down. But if you could overcome that, really take advantage of the reach that both forehands give you, and also the, the top spin, the ability to hit top spins on both wings, the ability to go out wide on your serves on both wings, then, you know, who cares about the decision-making process? But it has to be very good. It has to be very strong. It has to be very strong. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. It's just not going to work for your game. So try it if you can. And if it's not really working, I suggest to go with just a conventional forehand and a conventional backhand. If you enjoyed this video, kindly do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.